Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Sunday, August 27th, I believe, and I uh, haven't done a video in quite a while. It's like three weeks. Uh, it's been hotter than hell's doorknob around here. We had, last week, I think it was four days, it was 105, and uh, it, was, it was unbearable. I completed my uh, oxalic acid treatments. I got three in at seven days apart, and uh, I would come out uh, right at sun up and did them the last couple of times so those are those are complete i do want to hit them again I'd, I'd really like to give more but uh i might do one here in the next week or two but probably what i'll do is i'll wait till fall and i'll hit them uh like two seven days apart and uh that'll that'll set them pretty good uh so i've lost a few hives uh since the last video and i attribute it to just uh queens uh failing and not not superseding correctly here in my area to supersede a queen uh after the nectar flow it's it's uh odds are not good at all and in fact i've got a hive that i'm going to go into number 37 there on the end that apome uh it had a the very first one in there was the virgin queen she didn't make it back and uh I put in a brood frame, they made uh, more queen cells. I saw the virgin queen, she didn't come back. So I got a third third try in there now, but it's not gonna make it. Uh, there's no way, those queens just don't make it back. And I think the reason is uh, there's dragonflies. There's a lot of them this time of year. And uh, those slow flying queens are uh, easy picking for a dragonfly. So I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna check on that one and see if I see a virgin queen uh, or a, a queen cell being drawn on that, that latest frame I got in there. And the other Apame, so that's 30, so uh, high 34. Uh, that's got a good laying queen in it, but she's not the best looking queen. And uh, I'm gonna transfer that into a 10 frame box and I get that set for winter. And next to that's those two uh, double decker nukes. I haven't decided if I wanna put them into a 10 frame or just leave them like that. So we'll see. But uh, for this video, I'm going to get in there uh, in the two Apimes. And uh, oh, also, I've got some uh, Apivar mite strips that uh, Gary from uh, G's Bees gave me. So uh, go to uh, G's Bees. He's an Oklahoma beekeeper. He lives west of Haraways. He has a really cool operation. He's got 50 hives this year, and he's going to build up to 100 next year. He's got a really cool operation and he's out there in the woods in what's called the old cross timbers forest that's a actual forest used to be in oklahoma but uh yeah it's pretty neat so the name of his channel is g's bees g-e-e-z b-e-e-z -E -E so if you haven't gone over there and checked him out go check him out subscribe to him and uh he doesn't have a lot of subscribers but he has some really good content uh he just he just doesn't have a lot of viewers yet so he's building up so if you would go over there and check him out that's a pretty good channel. So he, he called me and asked me, uh, or he, he messaged me and said, hey, I got some, some Apivar strips, you want them? I was like, yeah, I could use a few. And I got over there and he gave me the whole package. <laughs> so he treated his 50, he bought a, a, a package in bulk. And uh, I think there was, <clears throat> I don't know, 70 or 80 in there. So he did his hives and he had like 25, 30 strips left over. He just gave them all to me. I said, I just need, I just need eight. <laughs> so I'm gonna do those Ap those uh, Apame hives and also I'm going to do my father-in-law's hives out in Fort Cobb because I can't get out there and do that uh, oxalic acid treatment because he's way out there. So uh, that'll get those hives out there set. So uh, thank you to G's Bees. Uh, that was very nice of him to do that. And also I gave some of those strips to a, a guy that uh, he bought. I sold one nuke this year and uh, he, came, he came by and I gave him uh, uh, four of those strips for his hive to get that going. So let's get in these Apimes, and uh, before I get started on that, I'll uh, show you which highs have failed and what's going on with that. So, and I got a new smoker. Check it out. This is a Hilco smoker, and it's got the heavy-duty uh, spring thing up here, not that little wimpy tab like the one I got from Man Lake. It's a, it's a nice smoker. It's pretty heavy-duty. Uh, up here it is. Uh, you're not going to bend that, so I really like it. Uh, my other one, it was just fine, except uh, I had it hanging on that basket on my four-wheeler on the front, 
and I took off and wasn't paying attention and it flopped off the front and I ran over it. <laughs> so uh, it's in the trash can. I, I thought about trying to bend it out straight. It was just, no, it was too, I mean, it was like a pancake. So yeah, I gave up on that. All right, let's get started and uh, I'll, I'll show you what's going on. We'll get in the Yapa Maze. Yeah, so today the temperature is a lot cooler. We got a cool front come through. Winds uh, got a breeze out of the north and a uh, high today was 85. It's probably about 80 here in the shade, so it's pretty nice. So uh, we lost Hive 19 there. Uh, it was just empty, and uh, I had caught it before they started robbing it out. So uh, I got some good honey frames out of that. In fact, I got two of those honey frames with me, and I'm going to move them over uh, into that hive that I take out of the Apame. And we lost Hive number five. Uh, that's the one that was the... Uh, double decker uh, double deep and it had three honey supers on it and i lost that during the right right before i harvested that thing got robbed that don't know what happened i believe it was queen failure and uh so that's it for this side and uh, over here so that's uh 20 and 21 has has uh failed uh i'm sorry 21 22 and 24 is the one on the end so i remember hive 22 i did a withdrawal from the queen bank and requeened that hive and that queen took off gangbusters and was laying good and uh that was right before it started getting really hot up into the hundreds and uh there was a lot of brood in there from that new queen and what i think happened was uh there was not enough field bees and nurse bees left from that failing hive uh, for them to uh, keep that hive cool so there are not enough bees to go out collect water and keep that hive cool and they're all they're out here in direct sunlight for the most part of the day and I think they just burned up and uh, they just kept getting dwindling dwindling and that brood started dying in there so I think that's what happened so uh, we had 38 hives at the peak of the season and uh, We've lost six, so that's down to 32 remaining. Let's get over here into these two apomes and uh, see what we find and uh, maybe get some uh, mite strips in there. Okay, here's our hive 37. So things look good out front, but I assure you things are not good inside. This is the hive that can't get right. I've seen uh, two queens in here, two virgin queens so far. And uh, I really like these Apame nukes. I think they help protect the, uh, the bees from the elements. And I had been feeding this a little bit. And you see the black ants are up here. But the ants can't get inside unless they go through the entrance. But they are getting on that sugar water a little bit. Those ants can uh, take over a hive. You got a weak hive and those ants get in there, they will uh, they'll start carrying out larvae. Okay, population isn't too good on this. It's not terrible. I put in a frame of bees with the uh, is that black ant. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Ah, got him. Lots of liquid nectar in there. So they got plenty to eat. So the frame I put in here had a lot of, it was covered with nurse bees. Uh, hopefully I didn't move the queen from the other hive. A lot of nectar here too. I looked it over real close for a queen. It's this center frame here. It's been about a week since I put it in there. So there's a lot of nectar in this frame too. Kind of looking here for a virgin queen or another queen in case that other one came back. But I didn't spot her last time I checked. And I think I did that uh, this last week one evening late. I didn't spot her. So here's our brood frame I put in. Another reason I put it in here so they don't go laying worker on me. And uh, I don't see that they're drawing down a queen cell. And there may not have been enough. Uh... Oh, I see a virgin queen on here. She's little. 
is right there. How lucky am I to spot that? Man. So, uh, she's obviously not mated. So with the Virgin Queen in here, and uh, I don't know, I'm hesitant to put that uh, mite strip in here. I don't know. What do y'all think? It probably doesn't matter. She's not laying or anything. But uh, with all the brood breaks they've had in here, uh, there shouldn't be hardly any mites in this. I'm just going to leave it be. We'll check back in a week's time. So yeah, I wasn't seeing them pulling down a queen cell. So when I noticed that, I thought, man, there might be a queen on this frame. And I looked real close, and sure enough. So they don't need fed. There's plenty in there to eat. There's no blank frames for them to draw out. So we're just going to go with that. And uh, she's got one in a hundred chance of going out and mating <laughs> and making it back in the end of August. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not betting on that. We'll probably wind up combining this uh, with this next hive down here that we're going to get into. So here's our two uh, double-decker nukes. One of these is a... Uh, a swarm I believe from my house so there might be a swarm from that cedar tree over there I don't remember which is which and then one of these down here is a swarm from the post office I think it's that one with the blue lid let's get in here and uh, so this has a laying queen uh, she's not gonna win a beauty contest because she's not the greatest looking but uh, I'm going to get this into a 10 frame. What I think I'm going to do is I want to set it up here on this other hive and I'm going to get my bottom board and box down there and just start moving frames. Then I can get this Apame put away and it'll be ready for next spring for uh, splits or a swarm or whatever. And it'll protect, uh, protect a split from... Uh, cold front when you, if you get a real cold cold snap and you're worried about your bees freezing out then uh, these things are really good insulated it's got nice handles so when I ordered my smoker I got me uh, five more uh, honey super boxes and I also got a Queen excluder tool. See how they build up that real hard wax on these? So this excluder tool is supposed to go over this and fit between these little wires and dig that out. So I haven't tried it yet. We'll see. I'm skeptical. <laughs> I'm not from Missouri, but you're going to have to show me. All right, let's start moving. So I've been feeding this one a little bit too. So up in the trailer there, I've got uh, some two frames full of honey that I had in the freezer. I'm gonna add to this. So this is a honey frame, not completely full. I think I've got seven frames here. Yeah, these hold seven. And I might add a frame feeder to this. This is a empty frame. I think I'm going to remove this and put one of those drawn out combs that I have. There's nothing in it. It was empty. So here's a brood frame. I'm going to try and keep these in the same order, pretty much. And here's our queen. I marked her red, but it's mostly worn off. She's a good looking queen. I must have her mistaken with another one. Uh, that's smaller. Because there ain't nothing wrong with her. 
this is going to make some uh, this is going to be a fine hive next year i'll put a drawn out comb right next to her this is a brood frame as well a lot of those have emerged already and she's backfilled so a lot of this pattern is because of the heat and uh, she's backfilled some of those there's larvae in some of those put it in there in the same spot same orientation you don't want to get your frames flipped around so all that's fresh brood right up against where she's used to it being this here's another brood frame she's a good queen brood on both sides and uh lots of nectar and honey up in the corners so this hive is doing good as far as food i put those two uh frames of honey in here they're probably good here's another one of these plastics that's uh hadn't been finished drawing out so there's not there's a little bit of nectar right there i'm going to shake this out and uh, give them a drawn out frame and this one here is mostly honey so i'll put this here i'm gonna put my frame feeder and uh I'm going to put those two honey frames on this side because the north is over here and I want my bees to go away from the cold side this direction in the winter and uh, I'll put that feeder and then they can fill up out here on these empty ones so four five I need three frames okay these two here are solid honey And this is an empty brood frame with some bee bread right here. So that'll be good if that queen wants to lay some more. Well, I said I was going to put the honey on this side. I think I'll split it up. I'll put one on each end. This one's not quite full. Actually, I'm going to put this right here. If it gets real cold, your bees aren't going to want to get up against like on the last frame to get the honey off it unless it's a warm day uh, when it's really cold they can't move very far so i'm trying to set this up uh, for winter so this high has got some good weight to it now and i'll get that frame feeder right here so they don't need fed a whole lot but uh Internal frame feeders are the best when it's uh, you're in a dearth time. Uh, you don't have near the potential for robbing when you're feeding internal like that. So we got a few bees up here in this uh, box. This inner cover I have doesn't have a notch and as hot as it is I want to make sure they have ventilation. I stole this one from down there on Hive 24 that's failed. I need a cover. <laughs> I stole the cover from down there too. Okay that hive is in good shape. So I almost forgot the Apovar strips. I got up there to the trailer and I saw them laying there. <laughs> okay, this should just take a second. So here's what they look like. And this is two strips. You can punch out this little triangle thing and hang it off of that. But I don't like that because they kind of are sideways and they push up against the frame. I like to hang them off of toothpicks and uh, so you put two of these per deep if it's full of bees which this is fairly full and these need to break apart and you space them two 
frames apart. So I'm going to put one right here. And I'm going to go over two frames right there. And you need to put them where the brood is at because that's where all your bees are going to be walking around. And I'm going to space these two frames here apart just a little bit because that strip is touching on the side and I, don't, I want it to be hanging freely. There we go. I'm going to scoot this one apart just a hair as well. So the bees will walk around on that strip and uh, spread the epivar throughout and it will kill the mites and not harm the bees. And I'll leave this block of wood here to remind me there's a feeder in there. Yeah, so that was a successful transfer. Got them out of this uh, Apame eight frame into, or seven frame, into a 10 frame deep. And uh, I wanna reduce this entrance down a little bit, just in case those black ants try to get in there. Got the uh, patented Jerome B Farm entrance reducers here. Yeah, that'll work good. So uh, next year I'll probably run this as a single deep and uh, just super it up from there and uh, see how it goes. I've started to experiment a little bit this year with some of the single deeps and it works out pretty good. Uh, you just have to be careful uh, in going into winter to make sure your single deep's got plenty of honey in there. So uh, I'm picked up from some other beekeepers, uh, Justin over at Sweet Stingers. You guys got a ton of knowledge. You should read his daily uh, lessons from the beehive they're on facebook and instagram check out sweet stingers and uh, he talks about single hive management this time of year reducing the the population of his hives pulling out brood frames and he makes late summer splits and uh, he uses uh, other queens though but uh, he goes into the winter with a smaller hive population and he has good luck using single deeps and even overwinters in nukes as well so uh, you should check that out. So uh, that's the end of this video. And uh, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to go check out G's Bees. And uh, we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.